next work session is the proposed FY 2025 budget presentations. Dr. Casey. As Mr. Harris uh, joins us in the front here, we, this is our afternoon that uh, for those that have been on the board before, uh, it's a, you know, a nice couple of hours we have in front of us of just really getting to understand. But it is the beginnings of this formality of the process. Uh, it goes without saying, Chesterfield County budgets year-round. We do financial planning year-round. We have multi-year capital and operating plans so that, you know, we try to, to negate or mitigate, if you will, any surprises to, to any uh, public official or the citizens themselves. Uh, having said that, you know, it goes without saying, you know, we're going to be starting off this afternoon with the schools, and, and I mentioned today at the chamber, and I'll say it again here, mm -hmm. that the school-county relationship is a very important relationship. It's what the people of the county at Chesterfield wants. Uh, so between board to school board, I appreciate those relationships. Superintendent to myself, that's a, it's a valued brotherly type relationship. And then you can see, you know, staff to staff follows that lead as well. So it takes all of them to be here together and fit hand in glove for what the schools need and our respect uh, for what they need. Uh, it goes without saying, the other priority of the county is public safety and the 24-7 business that it is. Uh, and again, that is a business of people, and those people need to understand that they can have a long, successful career with us. So we try and pay attention to that every day and, and focus on what is, in essence, the most decompressed step system that I'm aware of. So again, as you're here for your time and tenure, you are rewarded for that. Um, you're going to hear some news later today about transportation and some initiatives in that, leveraging the full and powers, if you will, that the CVTA has bestowed upon us locally at least, and doing things that we have never done before, but in essence honoring what the spirit of the law and many actually officials of state have prompted us to do uh, as in individual localities and then eventually as a region. Citizens and businesses, it goes without saying, we're very mindful of the tax burdens that we are creating for them. And, and again, the services that they get. We try to leverage their investment back to us. And when I say you know, tax burdens, that also includes other fees and other things of that nature. And, and Mr. Hayes is here today, and I mentioned it again in front of the chamber, and I got a lot of positive feedback. Many people don't realize we have the lowest water and sewer uh, rates uh, for those monthly bills that you get uh, anywhere in the region. And that is part of a household expense. In fact, for some citizens, their ho largest household expense is their uh, water and sewer bill. So, and then last but not least, um, it, as far as other partnerships, uh, our nonprofit partner sectors, you know, we are still in the game of trying to help them out. They do things uh, better than we can do it, and they can round up other funding sources and, and volunteers to provide those necessity based services. And then last but not least is the, uh, the businesses themselves. You know, at the chamber today, I got a lot of positive feedback. We have grown over 1,000 new businesses in Chesterfield County per the VEC. That's about a 10 percent increase in one year of businesses, many of them small to medium size, but every one of them important. And every one of them, I like to think, has been welcomed by us through whatever inspections and permitting processes. But all of them are thankful for that you have created a local economy that enables local people to buy goods and services uh, right down the road. And, and that is what's thriving the Chesterfield economy as we, we stand. We, we are not the state that issues mandates to others and helps figure out how they pay for it, uh, nor are we are the federal government that takes out operational loans to balance the budget. We, we are Chesterfield County. And uh, with that said, I'll turn it over to Mr. Harris. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'll be very brief. Um, so just sort of the outline for your afternoon, we've got the budget split up into three main pieces. Got uh, Bob here to do the, the school summary for you for what has been approved thus far. The school CIP is embedded in his section. Um, Mr. Durkin and myself will go through the county piece, same thing, no separate presentation of the CIP embedded within the county section, and then the same for uh, utilities in the third leg of the stool. Before I turn it over to Ms. Mr. Meister, I just want to thank him, Dr. Tylus, Dr. Doherty, all the school staff. It's been a, it's been a very smooth year. Um, I mean, we talk on a d near daily basis. And I think that's really, really made a made a big difference. It, it's tough to you know work through all these issues, particularly on the state side. But I think we've done a great job of that. And you can't uh, can't thank the school system enough for their partnership to get us to this point. More work to do. Uh, we got to get to April 10th, but uh, so far it's been a been a very good year. So, Bob, just want to thank you and your staff for for all that. Uh, thank you for that introduction, Mr. Harris, uh, Mr. Chair, Vice Chair. Members of the board, Dr. Casey, I really appreciate the opportunity to <coughs> share the school's uh, budget with you today. Uh, before I even get into this, I'd be, uh, I also want to echo the thanks to the county, Mr. Harris, uh, our own school board for their work throughout this process. Uh, we've gotten to a really good spot. We are not 
done. Uh, we've got your process to run. The state, as you know, is still ongoing. Uh, the school is in a bit of a unique situation in Virginia as we have to put together our budget before we really know either uh, leg of the stool, if you will. Uh, we work really closely with Mr. Harris, have a pretty good idea of what uh, the county will, will look forward, but we're really uh, shooting blanks on the state really at this point. So there's some uh, numbers out there. We'll talk about what those are today, but we know that we are full of a process uh, for the state. So with all that said, looking at what the school board had approved on February 22nd is a FY25 uh, budget that's 28.9 million above current year, fiscal year 24. Uh, this is grounded on that original budget uh, provided by the governor in December. We know there's been revisions from the General Assembly. Uh, we know that the answer won't be either the governor's budget or the General Assembly's budget. So as we have uh, worked with the school board right now, we are working off of the governor's budget. It's lower, it's the more conservative estimate. We know that there's going to be an opportunity to revisit all these numbers, quite frankly, when the governor and the Senate House come to a conclusion. So with that said, 28.9 million is a, uh, about a 3.5% increase to the budget is quite frankly, not enough to meet all of our needs. The school board has come forward uh, with additional, just under 24 million of additional unfunded needs that we're going to look to fulfill with uh, hopefully additional state funding. Obviously that's, as I've mentioned, uh, more often than <laughs> I probably should at this point, that's still, uh, still up in the air. Uh, Mr. Harris mentioned the CIP. Uh, you can see embedded in this particular plan are uh, several new elementary schools, so three new and three replacement elementary schools, a new middle school, two replacements, and a uh, partial on the middle school, as well as a new high school, a high school expansion, and a gym renovation. Uh, keeping in mind that those are, some are funded through things like uh, VPSA bonds that we've issued recently, uh, the referendum that we thank the county and the citizens uh, for their support in there, but there are items in that current CIP that remain unfunded and we'll look for continued support from all parties uh, going forward. Uh, the General Assembly just this weekend did approve a new budget. I'd love to come here and provide a detailed understanding of what's in that, how it compares to the governor's budget. However, as the school district, we are largely dependent on what I call here the calc tool. It's the uh, official document coming from the state, the DOE, that really outlines both the implications of the uh, state budgets as well as the actual distribution to CCPS. Without that, we're flying a little bit blind. What I can tell the board is the General Assembly budget is higher than the governor's budget. Mm -hmm. How much so, mm -hmm. we could speculate, but it would be just a guess based on what we know now. But uh, we fully expect the final answer to be somewhere in between. We hope it's closer to uh, what the General Assembly is in terms of school funding, at least. Uh, that's a great point that you mentioned. I'm glad you said that because we always have to wait on the state Maybe we should look at altering their calendar a little bit so they could finish before us <laughs> since they impact us so significantly. So that might be one of our legislative asks for the future to uh, work with them. I know they can do it. It's just a matter of the <laughs> will uh, to do it. So that's a great point you, you made there, and I appreciate that very much because each year we find the same argument that we have to wait, we have to wait, and we, sh we should try to change that at least so that we don't have to wait. Uh, so I just want to point that out very good. And also I want to point out one thing too that Dr. Casey mentioned earlier, we don't have to borrow money to cover operational costs. A lot of times citizens may not know that. And so that's an important part of what we do in county government. It's part of the excellence that we have instituted in how we operate financially in county government. And as you mentioned on some of the unfunded uh, items in the CIP, what we want to do is, as we proceed through this, we'll look at a plan in terms of how we can possibly fund those CIP items, Matt. That might be something we can focus on. Where can we get the money and expect it to come from as we uh, travel down this road of budget. So, But thank you for being here, and please proceed on. Uh, we can stop with questions as you proceed. Is that okay? Absolutely. I just want to make sure it's okay. Thank you. Appreciate uh, that. All right. So I have gotten feedback that I speak quickly, so I'll definitely pause as we go through this for, uh, to allow for questions. Uh, as we turn the page, uh, the donut here represents the, uh, as I mentioned, the current uh, $913.7 million budget that the school is working off of. Again, predicated on that 
governor's proposal that he put out in December. Uh, also embedded in here is the county contribution. This shows plus 20 uh, and ongoing contributions from the county. I want to pause here and thank Dr. Casey, Mr. Harris, the board uh, for that initial, uh, what I'll say, offer uh, up front uh, well exceeds anything we've seen in recent years in terms of that first, first offer and really helped uh, make for a smooth process, uh, as Mr. Harris already alluded to. Uh, I think there is still room to go on the state side, no doubt about it, but uh, that is a fantastic starting point uh, for us, especially on the county side. You will notice also to the right here, uh, last year we were looking at by the time the state finished their uh, process, which was September, by the way, we're not going to wish that into existence. Did you uh, say that again, September last sep year? September, yes. We, they really need some help. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just being obvious. Uh, couldn't go through this presentation without saying that. But we ended that process at just about 49 million. So as you can see, with the combined contribution, 20 from the county, you can do the math on the state and other items. We're looking at about a $29 million increase. Uh, the school board did approve and presents to the uh, Board of Supervisors today a balanced budget to that. $913.7 million number with the understanding that there are additional unfunded items that we'll walk through as we go Repeat forward. that number again, 913. Uh, 913.7. 0.7, 0.7. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm having a hard time reading. Oh, I need a mag magnifying glass here, by the way. Yeah, that about, font is a, uh, yeah, is a gray. Yeah. It's not a black. That's we why should I had to ask for it. <laughs> I, I really am struggling with that. But thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. That's so important. So uh, flipping to the next page, where we expect to uh, spend that funds, not surprisingly, being the school district, uh, the bulk of that funding is really pointed toward instruction. Seventy percent of those funds go directly towards instruction, uh, whether that be teachers, books, et cetera. Uh, the bulk of the remaining funds go into uh, areas that, not surprisingly, are pretty directly related to instruction. You can think transportation. You can think operations and maintenance, maintaining uh, our building. Uh, technology, Chromebooks, maintaining Chromebooks, et cetera, and only a small part left for what I would call administration. You see it there as administration attendance, as well as essentially paying our mortgage, uh, the debt service of about 7.5% uh, in the middle. Top How do down. we do Chromebooks? Do we lease those still or do we purchase them? Uh, we're on the last year of our current lease. We do both, to be honest oh, with both. you. Okay. We have some lease that expires this year. We've got a make a decision on that, quite frankly, in the FY26 budget to uh, determine how best to uh, fund those long term, whether another lease makes sense or whether a purchase or some sort of service agreement. And we're working closely with our, our CIO, uh, Dr. Tillman, on the right trade-off mm -hmm. in that decision. Okay. Yeah, lease versus purchase, I think, is a very important decision. We've looked at that over the years on a number of areas yeah. uh, with schools, so thank you for that. Yeah, one of the okay. things he's really excited about considering is a service agreement where it's kind of somewhere in between uh, where we can get uh, a little bit better on both sides, but yeah. still a lot to be uh, worked out on that department. Very good. Right. <clears throat> so looking at, uh, first and foremost, what is afforded in the school's budget in that $29 uh, million? Uh, we'll start on the left. Uh, the highlight of this whole sheet is that bottom bullet there, which is our 4% compensation increase. Dr. Doherty and the school board really looked at making sure that we first and foremost take care of our teachers, take care of our staff, so that they can be there to take care of our students. Uh, that's the single biggest line item in the budget that's about a $25 million increase. Uh, we do have uh, a give or take $5 million of uh, offsets to that and technical adjustments, which helps uh, helps the things go around. I won't waste the board's time explaining each of those individually. Obviously happy to answer any questions on them. Uh, moving further to the right, uh, what I've labeled here as required increases. Uh, you can think of that as inflation and state mandates are the primary uh, bundle there. The first couple items really fall into that inflation bucket, uh, custodial contracts have increased with our outsourced vendors for those. Special ed transportation uh, has also increased. A little bit of a volume game there, uh, but also a contract increase on the special ed transportation. Uh, I mentioned debt service. We need to make sure we uh, pay our mortgage. We had a little bit of a down year this year in terms of debt service, just based on, uh, <coughs> excuse me, timing of the referendum. This 1.8 million moves us back to where we were uh, at about 68 million going forward. So not really an increase in debt service, but more of a right size of uh, that particular number. 
reading specialist is the first thing on here that I'll refer to as a state mandate. Uh, this was in the uh, governor's budget uh, as an increase in the reading specialist. So in order to bring in, it was about 26 uh, additional reading specialists that were required. Uh, that would cost us about 27, as is typical with anything state related. Uh, they pay only a portion of that. So a little over a million of that would have been funded as part of that state increase. But that is one of those <laughs> items that has as introduced in the governor's budget and it maintains itself in the general assembly budget. So we're pretty confident that that one will, will stand by the time we get to the end of this Ms. particular Snyder, budget. I think she has a question. It, yes, ma'am, sorry. Ms. Snyder. Is this was, sorry. what I've been getting all the emails about for the market level pay for a dedicated occupational therapist, physical therapist, speech th and language pathologist? No, that'll be on the next page. Got it. Next page. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll see uh, that as targeted compensation increase okay. on the next page. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. The, this this uh, reading specialist is a critically important area. This is one area we cannot fail in. We have to fund this uh, because what happens is we have a group of students who can't read and we can't <coughs> tolerate that in this economy and this society. So if we have to bolster, increase, or enhance this somewhere, we will do that. We must do that going forward. So I just want to make that known. Yep. <clears throat> and again, this is a 26 uh, additional required uh, reading specialist. The good news is 10 of those we've already had on staff. We've, we're over SOQ on that. So we're looking for next year an additional uh, 16 to actually bring into the operating plan. Uh, as we look to the far right, what I'll call maintain service levels here, uh, several items to consider here. First, uh, Focus facilitators for the board, what that is, is a uh, individual in primarily high need schools where we were unable to bring in a licensed math teacher into Chesterfield County. Uh, in this model, we are able to hire a licensed math teacher mm -hmm. out of state generally speaking, to get a licensed math teacher in front of those in front of those students. And this cost is the additional cost of providing the uh, adult in the room to supervise that room, provide additional support, et cetera. We found that to be a really successful model to ensure we do have that licensed math teacher where we can't quite find them in Chesterfield County or quite frankly, Virginia. Uh, it's an extremely uh, tight job market, especially for math teachers. Uh, that would really allow us to keep that essentially two adult model, one on screen, one in the room for those classrooms. Mixed virtual and virtual. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, very good. Uh, Bilingual liaisons, this is an initiative where we have 14 currently in place at schools. Uh, ESSER funded today. We know that funding dries up. We'll need to ensure we keep this. This is uh, at schools that are, have a high percentage of essentially Spanish language speakers. This allows uh, the office staff, teachers, et cetera, to have someone to help interface uh, with parents, with families, to ensure that we have a good communication uh, with them. Uh, psychologists, social workers were all uh, well aware of mental health concerns. Uh, day porters, this was additional uh, bodies we put in schools to help meet higher cleaning standards once COVID came into place. We don't want to step those back down either. And lastly, a couple of support positions that help with things like substitute pool and help manage all those uh, additional Chromebooks. I'll pause here knowing there's a lot on that page. Any questions or comments from anyone? Seeing none, I'll flip to the uh, second page, which is the items that the school board uh, has considered uh, and views as priorities but is not able to fund uh, at this point. Uh, on the left are bonuses. Uh, there's two of them uh, listed up here, IA and custodial bonuses, really uh, working from the bottom up. Those are positions that are really some of our lowest paid in the district, and this offers somewhere between $15,000 and $2,000 uh, bonuses for those positions. And the other one is a high needs bonus. Uh, this $3.4 million would maintain uh, a $3,000 bonus at 11, what we're calling high need schools. You will notice two asterisks there as our school board has raised their hand and asked a very important question, mm -hmm. is that enough, right? We wanna make sure if we're gonna go and uh, continue to keep this, we wanna make sure mm -hmm. it will really uh, continue to make a difference. Uh, is it targeted to the right building? Should we expand the number of buildings? Should we expand the number of subjects? Mm -hmm. So that's something that should funding become available, the school board really wanted to look at a lot closer, which is why what you see here is a 3.4 million that is currently in the process with an understanding the school board may look to uh, 
other needs uh, there as well. Uh, on the right side, uh, largely grouped as other needs, are a number of items. Uh, annual substitutes, this would be one at each uh, individual school. Uh, school security officers, right now we have security officers at all high schools and some middle schools. This initiative would uh, essentially finish the job and put them at all elementary schools and the remainder of the uh, middle schools. Major maintenance, you'll hear me talk about this a little bit later. This is a really important item for us uh, and working with Matt closely on this one as well. We've done a lot of great things uh, with major maintenance thanks to some of the major maintenance bonds from this board a few years ago as well as additional funding from uh, the COVID dollars that we've really been able to move the needle on major maintenance. This is an item that we need to not lose traction on and we need to continue to move forward on our ongoing operations uh, to fund that. Uh, targeted compensation increases, Ms. Schneider's already mentioned this one. This is speech language pathologists, OTs, PTs, social workers to really uh, move our current salaries up to what I'll call a school level. This doesn't get us all the way to private market uh, pay, but at least levels us with uh, other school districts. Mm -hmm. Any comments or questions in this area, supervisors? Dr. Mello. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just had a question. You know, the old adage is when you make everything a priority, you have none. Right. Um, of the unfunded priorities, not to put you on the spot, and you can say, <laughs> Dr. Miller, forget it. Um, <laughs> but I'm curious to know, what of these do you feel are that the, that the schools are feeling is, are the priorities, like maybe the top three? Yeah. You're welcome. I mean, I think that's a fantastic question. Is one mm -hmm. I would honestly need to defer to the school board and the board on. I know as they're working through and finding their priorities, I am confident to say that the top three for one board member may not be the top three for a, another board member. So I'm not going to uh, sort of opine necessarily on staff's position on this right now, but it's clearly something that's on the board's agenda to work through. And quite frankly, will a little bit be dependent on quite frankly how much funding we wind up with. Right, well even before we get to the number, what I'm curious to know is what are the top three um, so that we can have a sense of what the target might, we could get to if possible, or what happens with the state and you know all that stuff. So that's kind of what I'm curious about. So um, yeah, did Mr. Engel look like was gonna ask yeah. follow up on that? Uh, well, he said he, did, he wasn't sure because different board members may have different right. sure. top threes, but to that end into what uh, Ms. Snyder, shared with some of the emails we're receiving even if the board was to um in the, the particular emails that we're getting today say we're going to put 1.9 million more to schools that does not mean that it would fund one of these categories because the school board would still be able to prioritize any difference that we gave them um to any of those areas or something else if they wanted to um, we couldn't designate what it goes to so we couldn't just honor that huh the school board could but we but we could not if we did increase our budget it would not necessarily mean that it would fund um what somebody may be requesting us to fund right. i think it's important for them to know that we can't just fund that and say okay the, the board of supervisors did that yeah, yeah I, I would agree and i think this may be an area where we can work with the chair and vice chair of the school board to uh, ascertain what are their top three or five priorities because uh, this was a long list and if we had the money what what could we do so I, I think we need to hone in on that in terms of really what is the highest priority and how can we fund it because we'll be working to to do just that but if we don't know then it's hard to just throw uh, money at a uh, category this is a huge huge category you're talking on uh, was it 18.2 million dollars that's a huge increase uh, that we need to ascertain what is really critical that we have to do as I pointed out earlier mm -hmm. I see reading specialists as a critical I'm glad that's not down there but in the afforded area adjustment areas and if that needs to be augmented that's something that needs to be contemplated because we don't want to be bare bones when it comes to critical uh, educational needs such as reading math as you pointed out with math earlier and other critical areas of education yeah. so I just wanted to share that and we'll be working with I'll be working with the school board chair to ascertain where we should go forward because it's a great yeah. list and I can see where 
we want to try to meet some of those needs, but we need to understand really, given the money, we have a limited pot of money, right. even with respect to the state, we, it's limited. And so we need to ascertain where we need to be and what we need to focus on in terms of meeting those needs. M Mr. Carroll, I think you have a comment. Uh, Mr. Chair, I guess my question is, um, is there a potential in what the state budget is proposed to make up any of this difference? Uh, what I will be able to comment on is the General Assembly budget was north in terms of funding for CCPS versus what the governor's budget was. So there is clearly hope that whatever winds up with that compromise will continue to be north of uh, what, the, uh, what the governor's proposal is, which is what this current unfunded list is ultimately based on. So there's a real opportunity to look at this list first and foremost with whatever additional state money does come out of that process, mm -hmm. at which point the conversation, quite frankly, as Mr. Holland had suggested, then it becomes the, okay, what is really the top two, three, 12 of these items that we need to uh, need to address? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Engel. Um, just to point out, though, that the county has gone well above and beyond anything we've ever tried to do in the past, and that these, um, what we're looking at in these needs are actually state caused by the state, not by the county and not by the citizens of the county. And if the state would fund their JLARC study with the $226.7 <laughs> million that they should be given the school system in addition to what they're already funding, none of these nor many other things that we would probably like to do would be on this list. So it's not a county issue. This is absolutely a state issue. Well said, I think, uh, Dr. Casey. <laughs> um, and, and of course, when the governor comes to Chesterfield, it's a good opportunity to let him know where we all stand on that <laughs> issue. Thank you, sir. I, I just thought I would be remiss if I didn't say, too, that e even if you see news or hear news of what could be additional state monies, it goes back to sometimes the state also has words that go with the money and mandates of how they need to be spent. Mm -hmm. And their mandates may not be anything that we think is our most pressing need of the next dollar coming in. Mm -hmm. So the schools need to also go through that deliberation. So n n I don't sense as much in this particular process, but I've seen processes before the state where they have given you extra monies, get headlines for it, but they're actually having you do things that you never thought you needed to do. And it costs yep. us more money. And thank so, you for saying that, Dr. Casey. And, you know, that's, I consider that disingenuous in the financial yeah. world. I consider that. I yeah. might as well say so. Yeah, I'll give and, you two specific examples on that exact point from uh, Dr. Casey. One is uh, with respect to teacher compensation. Uh, what they've proposed in this House and Senate version is a 3% increase. I've already talked to you that we're at 4%. So we're north of what the state proposal, so that would essentially be money that we could free up to use for this. So that's a good thing. The other example that I'll give uh, that we're still trying to uh, dig through the implications of that came out of the General Assembly budget is an increase in the standards of quality and a change in the formula for our English language learner population. Mm -hmm. We support more teachers in that group, hard not to, but that does create a state mandate on that particular item as well. So things that we need to look at as that both the General Assembly and the governor get together and form that final opinion. Thank you. Ms. Snyder. No. So as you said, you know, the um, special ed, um, excuse me, and the reading specialists, yes. those are vital. But in my opinion, I would think that the those targeted compensation increases for the <laughs> special needs kids, I, I, again, where are they going to get those services if we're not going to be funding them? I mean, I, I <laughs> so this is a little bit of a... Uh, left hand, right hand, right? If we can't hire these people, we are forced to go to outside third party uh, providers, which we wind up paying for yeah. anyway, quite frankly. And, and so uh, how is that not an essential thing for our schools also, as well as additional bilingual um, liaisons that mm -hmm. we, we obviously need in the schools also? So yeah. I, that's yeah. just my personal opinion. And I think the school board would say generally these are all needs. They're not wants to most of that point, but we do recognize, as Mr. Holland, Mr. Engel, others said, there is fiscal realities here that we need to uh, make sure we meet the needs within the current budget, and we're going to cross our fingers that the state comes through with uh, the bulk of this. It would be great if it was the JLARC number, but I don't see that happening this year. <laughs> well, I appreciate the comments. And let me make one last comment here on this other needs area. 
And that is that, you know, I, I don't like the idea that we are putting off major maintenance at $3 million. I, re, I was here when we were uh, down $60 million, and we had to catch up many years ago. That's not an option. And I think our budget should have maybe, one, as we've stated in the past, 2.5% budgeted each year for major maintenance for these buildings that the county owns. The county owns the school building, and the schools are gracious enough to use them, hopefully well, during school hours to educate our children. But that, that's not an item that should be, in my humble opinion, in that area. And I think we need, I'm not sure where that's yeah. coming from, but when you, okay. maintenance is has to be done. If you don't do it, you're deferring it. And we don't yeah. want to defer major maintenance yeah. of $3 million, hoping the state will come through. That, that to me, is an unacceptable yeah. premise. I will make this point a little bit stronger in a couple slides, but I agree, Mr. Allen. Uh, next couple I will move through relatively quickly because they're largely summary slides. Uh, here you can see the revenue and expense, the balance budget that we are uh, providing the Board of the Supervisors uh, this e afternoon is uh, balanced at $28.9 million on revenue and expense, and you see the $23.6 uh, million that was, uh, we just discussed in terms of other needs. Uh, what that looks like in the whole, if you add in our grants and food service funds, it's about 32 million overall, uh, about a three and a half percent, 3.4 percent uh, increase in its totality. Uh, more summary slides here for the public, so I will skip through those relatively quickly and get through the next section, which really talks through uh, our CIP. Okay. So. First slide I'll talk about here is our school opening plan, which really drives the uh, the dollars that are presented in other forms. Uh, the items in green here are items that are well underway. Uh, shovels are in the ground. Buildings are starting to go up. You see Falling Creek Middle School going uh, to open uh, this upcoming fall. We're super excited about that project. Uh, well underway on both the uh, Western Area Middle School and the Davis Elementary School project. Uh, we're getting prepared for bid on Bensley as well, uh, and the West Area Elementary School right behind that. Uh, as you get out a little bit further, we get into a little bit more speculation. I've mentioned some of these projects. Uh, we are still looking for additional funding, uh, most notably in this next list is at Dale District uh, Elementary School. That's one that I know uh, Matt and I have been in a lot of conversations. I know uh, others on this board with our board have been in conversations about. Uh, there's just a really acute need in that stretch of the county uh, that didn't really show itself until after we made some of the decisions on the referendum, and now we're sitting here where we really have that particular uh, need uh, that's uh, really crucial on our plan. Yeah, Sir. that's a great point you mentioned because we want to be nimble. Even though we put a, a referendum out for the community, we want to be cognizant of where we're going to be in two to three years and what, what information we put out, do we need to alter it, improve it, enhance it? And I think that's something we want to do, and that's why uh, I'm, I'm asking us and directing Matt to make a look, take a look at that and see what we need to do in terms of where the funding may come from, right. what other possible sources of getting that done. Uh, because when we put a referendum out, we don't have perfect knowledge. We have some good knowledge, we hope. And so once we uh, compare actuals to the, the plan, then we can make adjustments and, and make the appropriate decisions. And that's something we want to focus on is in the CIP, especially as we go down. Because Absolutely. when was a referendum approved? Who can tell me? Last November. That November. wasn't too long ago. 22. November so we're talking about two years. So we're talking two years ago. Okay, so we always want to be looking at where we are and what we need to do to pivot to where we need to be. I think we got to be flexible uh, in this area because it's children, students depend on it. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, I fully support figuring out a way to pay for the uh, Dale District um, Elementary School, but <laughs> I um, no, no fail to see that, how with all of the schools that are up there in um, the what's going on where did the 20 million dollar gym improvement for lc bird high school come from because i've that that is new to me yeah that was an item that was added uh, at the request of the school board in their uh, work session discussed in the work session on the 13th and added in uh, the 20 February 22nd approval uh, we recognize that's another item that does not currently have funding to it which is why it's at the end of the uh, line here but it was uh, the school it, it board. just seems you could do not that I'm necessarily advocating for it, but you could do all the rest of the high schools 
uh, football fields in AstroTurf for the um, same price. Like putting $20 million into a gym in one school with all the needs that we have does not seem to fit the priorities that we've had. So I just wanted to bring that up. And, and yeah, that, that's that's a good point. I would agree. I think we need to evaluate that since it was just done in uh, on the 13th of February. So I'm not saying we don't need to do it, but I think we need to be aware of that. So uh, I would agree. I would agree that we need to evaluate that uh, relative to what we're doing in school CIP. Thanks. Yep. And quickly touching on the other items that I haven't yet spoke to, you notice the ones that are set to open uh, if – Everything aligns in August of 28 are our, essentially our oldest uh, buildings, Midlothian Middle and Grange Hall uh, in that year. And then when you get out to the far piece, it's really items that are enhancements to existing uh, buildings. You've already mentioned the Bird Gym. Uh, Matoka Middle finishing that project in Thomas Dale, uh, moving the ninth grade essentially class onto the same campus as the rest of the school. Uh, Mr. Holland has already talked a little bit about major maintenance. I wanted to make uh, his broader point here. Uh, what you show here is the last several years since the uh, the county and schools really re-emphasized uh, major maintenance and recognized the importance of that. Uh, you can see the last few years we've been running at about $30 million of spend per annum. Uh, a lot of HVAC work uh, a couple years ago, a lot more roofing work now. As you can see, the green kind of morphs to blue, and that'll change uh, a little bit over time. The important thing to note for this school board is the funding that was won, the bond funding that the Board of Supervisors have uh, provided recently and the additional of uh, federal COVID dollars still provide us enough in our piggy bank, if you will, to spend at about this $30 million level in FY25. So with our ongoing uh, transfer and what would be the $6 million that's currently in our budget, if we add the $3 million in the unfunded list, uh, that would be on top of that. But we can continue to meet this about $30 million run rate of maintenance in FY25. However, that well runs dry after that, and that's when we really need to consider for FY26 and beyond how to continue to fill that major maintenance bucket because schools 100% agrees with the point that the chair made earlier that we cannot delay major maintenance that only hurts uh, in the long term even more than it does in the near term. Uh, so one more year of continuing to uh, be able to uh, assist on the uh, both the federal grants as well as the bond and then we need to really look at other ways to continue to fund that. That three million in the current needs is really there to take a small step not a big step, but a small step towards that, recognizing other needs uh, across the uh, across the district. Thank you. So, as as you, as I understand it, the, the three million is is an incremental increase in your existing yeah. uh, capital needs. Yeah. In that One of regard, the, yeah. sorry. That's that's so uh, so. This is three millions needed this year <laughs> to fund the thirty million. Well, we with, for our, this year or next year. Our ongoing operating transfer into major maintenance mm -hmm. is about six and a half million dollars. Okay. That three million would move it to about nine and a half million dollars. Okay. Needless to say, that's still a big gap between that and thirty million dollars. So we've been filling mm -hmm. that gap with bond funding, with the help of uh, you in the last few years, as well as mm -hmm. uh, additional federal funding. So we know we need to get to thirty million or below. You talked about two and a half percent. Our goal. If we wanted to make it one and a half percent, it's closer to forty-five or so million. Okay. So Very we are good. below one and a half. Sorry. Very good. All right, Dr. Casey, comment. And I'll defer to Mr. Meester here, but I also do think you know in the in the recalculation of this formula, and we can work together on that. One of the things you as a board and the school board have done is built many new schools and, and replacement schools that otherwise were consuming and part of that calculation for major maintenance. So not, not to dismiss it or discount it, but it's just when you move into a new house, you know, that first year or two, you're not having to replace the roof or HVAC system. So we, we the, the 30 million threshold with everything that you as a board have appropriated through referendum or otherwise, and you saw the list of all the new schools coming, you know, you don't have to do a significant improvement to the old Bensley Elementary School as an example for major maintenance. In fact, we shouldn't be doing large significant improvements to a school that we're otherwise taking down. So we'll work together on perfecting that formula. The 2.5% is a good business practice over, over the useful life of all of your assets. We, we adhere to that formula, so I do think we, we need to also count what may be the brand new shiny objects that don't need that investment right away. 
It's very good. And totally and appreciate that there is a lot more math to do behind the scenes on that, 100%. Very good. We appreciate that very much. Other comments, uh, super, supervisors? Any other comments? Yeah, again, I want to reiterate uh, the fact that that, that ma major maintenance issue, three million, should not be, in, in my opinion, that CAG or it should be funded somehow or another. And the county may have to step up and do that uh, as we look at other priorities and other uh, decisions to make relative to uh, the monies we receive, basically the county's uh, tax receipts, as, as, as we mentioned. So other comments or questions? I greatly appreciate your being here in the calendar. You have April 9th, uh, school board meeting. Uh, yeah. So the, the big point on this slide, uh, Mr. Chair. Is what? Uh, April 9th, uh, should stars align and we have a better view of what the uh, state budget will be, there's a chance we come back on April 9th with amendments. Let's be honest, that's not realistic. Uh, it'll be more likely the May meeting uh, after your approval of your uh, particular budget that we'll have a better idea of where that state revenue is going to go. So we'll have to uh, have to deal with revisions uh, after the fact, but we're well prepared for that. We've done it quite frankly for the last two years, unfortunately. So we're looking like year three. With the eclipse on April 8th, I am very confident the stars are going to align. <laughs> <laughs> Just not the ones we need. Thank you for being here today. We appreciate that and give our very best to your colleagues there and uh, share our comments as well accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Meester. Uh, Dr. Case. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Tylus is, was here as well and yeah, appreciate his time and effort. That. Dr. Tylus, thank you. Uh, I think you got our con Okay. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> uh, thank you, sir. We appreciate your being here as well.